Everywhere you look, its batteries are included. Be it on land, on water, or in the air, ever more things run on electrical power stored in batteries. But the thirst for electrification is swallowing up rare materials such as lithium, nickel, and cobalt in the production of all those batteries. So how can we guarantee their supply, especially in times of crisis? It's a question of sustainability. Based on the current trends and rate of demand, there's no way around battery recycling. Battery recycling isn't new, but the demand for high-performance rechargeable batteries has given it a sense of urgency. There was a time when batteries just started cars, or powered remotes or flashlights. They all looked roughly the same, and when they stopped working, they often ended up in the trash. Today, there's a race on to perfect energy storage with scientists around the world vying to improve battery technology. But there is a catch. The raw materials they need are in short supply. We've come to Münster, which is fast becoming Germany's battery research capital. At the Fraunhofer Battery Cell Research Institution, scientists want to develop batteries that can be easily recycled when their charging days are over. Everything is water-based here at the moment. The aim is to provide a solution process for recycling and separating the materials with water. Modern battery cells are quite like the old ones, a rolled-up sandwich. There's a negative pole, usually copper and graphite, and a separate positive pole, usually aluminum coated with a mixture of raw materials such as lithium, nickel, and cobalt. And there's the problem. Lithium is not rare, but demand is huge, and mining it in places such as here in Chile has a huge effect on local water resources. It's also mined in Australia, China, and North America. European battery makers are far more reliant on far-flung imports. Homegrown attempts to mine it in places such as Spain and Portugal, however, have met with strong local opposition. Ukraine was exploring potentially huge lithium deposits before the Russian invasion. As for nickel and cobalt, the supply is equally unpredictable. Often mined under poor social or environmental conditions, both commodities are subject to extreme price volatility. Nickel's price had been steadily rising, but Russia's war in Ukraine made it briefly almost double. And demand for cobalt has been pushing the price up for years. While researchers chase energy and resource-efficient solutions, EV mass production is pushing on with existing batteries. Cars like the Seat Cupra Born contain hundreds of individual lithium-ion cells arranged in modular packs. And when these batteries can no longer charge enough, they become a precious resource in themselves. The company TSR has been in the scrap metal business for more than 100 years. Now, they specialize in recycling batteries, in this case a Mercedes battery pack from an EQS. That means dismantling the battery tray and separating the modules to give them a second life as power banks. Even if these cells lack the punch to move a car, they are usually still in pretty good shape. Second life management could be even easier if the technicians had a better idea of the cell's history. We have little information, so of course we'd like a battery passport, where you can easily see what the life cycle of a battery has been. That data would help the recycling process. Efficient recycling is key to dealing with dead lithium-ion cells. The researchers in Münster are not just betting on water-based chemicals to streamline the process. We're also developing a design that is particularly easy to disassemble. And thirdly, we label the materials so that the recycling company knows what is in the cell, so that it can be recycled as quickly as possible. TSR included batteries in the recycling business two years ago and the company is still figuring out the best way to do it. But the effort is paying off. Not only are they recovering valuable resources, but they're also helping to fill an ever-growing demand. We're talking about resources that are rare and difficult to obtain. 
Just take a look at the metal exchanges. Nickel prices are going through the roof. As primary raw materials go up in price, we can mitigate it with raw materials from recycling. We can create a circular economy and increase local stocks of raw materials. Lithium and cobalt from local sources instead of from Chile or Congo? That's what Primobius in the hills of central Germany is offering. This recycling plant is a kind of reverse mine. It can take end-of-life lithium-ion batteries and isolate the component materials for reuse in manufacturing processes. The technology has attracted interest from around the world, such as this South Korean delegation. Stage one, we shred the batteries and sort them into their individual components. Stage two, we process them hydrometallurgically. This converts the batteries and their components into highly pure products, which can go directly back into battery manufacturing, which completes the battery's value recuperation cycle. Stage one, shredding and sorting to recover metal and plastic components is relatively easy. The tricky bit is dealing with the black mass, the sludge of everything else that was in the battery, including lithium, cobalt, nickel, and other valuable raw materials. This is fed into what looks like a giant chemistry kitchen where the precious compounds are extracted and separated. It looks complicated compared to traditional mining, but has several advantages. If I mine lithium in South America using highly energy-intensive processes, then transport the material here first for material processing and then to the battery cell producer, I have very long transport routes and a high CO2 footprint. By contrast, if the lithium is available on the market here and can also be recycled here, the CO2 footprint is significantly lower, but it has to be available at the same cost as the conventional resource. But could recycling replace physical mining? It's not unthinkable that, once the millions of battery cells now being produced reach the end of their life cycle, about half of future lithium demand could be covered by recycling. We have partners in Germany who can reuse the good products. And that's what's known as a natural fence within Europe, where we don't want the products to leave Europe again. It's a kind of circular system. The battery recycling loop is of growing concern for all car manufacturers in their drive to secure raw materials needed to build millions of batteries. Primobius is helping Mercedes-Benz construct its own recycling factory as it seeks to maximize its recycling rate and cut resource consumption and production costs. From 2023, Mercedes aims to reclaim 96% of all its battery cell resources recouping lithium, nickel, and cobalt in a circular production system. Other automobile manufacturers are following similar paths. Such recycling mines could ease raw material consumption and environmental damage and help the transition to e-mobility, whether on land, water, or up in the air.